Good afternoon and welcome to our live coverage of England's friendly international in Hungary. It's another important step, of course, in our build-up to the European Championships in June. And watching with us is Brian Clough. Good afternoon to you, Brian. Let's, well. first of all, have a look at the England team lineup because uh, the question mark has to be over the back four, doesn't it? Not very much experience, actually. Um, McAllister is untried, obviously. Pallister, yeah. uh, Pallister McAllister. Adams, still inexperienced. Yes, Viv, Viv obviously is the experienced one. Uh, young Pierce, who works with us, hasn't got much experience either. And it's a very, very experimental side. And I just hope it comes off for Bobby Robson. Mm. It's fair enough, though, isn't it, to experiment at this stage? Oh, yes, I, think, I think he could have done it two or three months ago. And if he's going to get it right in June, then this is the time to be doing it. It's been forced on him a bit by injuries, hasn't it? Yes, well, that, that happens in the English scene over, you know, this part of the season. We're in the last few weeks in April. People get injured, people go down sick. Everything happens, because we've got such a hard season, it's incredible. Interesting to see Brian Robson and Steve McMahon together in midfield. I'm a bit sorry for Neil Webb. He's gone off the boil with us at the moment at Forest, but I would have liked Bobby Robson to have persevered with him. But McMahon has had a magnificent season. The skipper's the one under pressure, actually. Why do you say that? Because nobody really knows how much he's going to react to an indifferent season. So he's the one that's under pressure where he can keep his side in June. I think McMahon has to come in the side and Bobby Robson could pick Neil Webb and McMahon. How big a test then is this for England against the Hungarians? Well, I don't know how good they are, and I don't know how uh, anybody else knows how good they are. Um, we've not beaten them, or, or we have beaten them for so many matches and that type of thing. I think it's going to be hard today, a lot harder than people think. Well, Brian, let's have a quick look at the uh, Hungarian lineup. And there it is. Uh, a number of players actually coming back home from abroad. One person to look out for, Datari there, who uh, plays for Eintracht Frankfurt in the World Cup. Midfield man. He actually played for the rest of the world, you may remember, at Wembley at the beginning of our British football season, our English football season. The Hungarians recently had a 3-0 defeat in Belgium. They beat Turkey by a solitary goal in the last minute here. And over Easter went to West Germany and played at club side Karlsruhe and just managed a 3-3 draw. So it's not a distinguished record of late, but a good start for them. And a great chance now as uh, Vincer showed a tremendous bit of pace at the end. And England looked terribly static in their central defensive areas and could so easily have been behind. A lovely cross in. There's Vincer going for it. Trevor? I think, it's, I think it's important that England try and sort out who's going to get a little bit tighter this death today because they are playing with five in midfield, Hungary, against England's four. And we're being outnumbered and they're allowing him to get a bit too much freedom. Well, McMahon might be one of the candidates for that, but he's on the ball at the moment trying to get it through to... Well, was that... Well, it looked to me as though that could well have been a penalty as Lineker was brought down, but the referee said, no, there's more pain for Lineker. Detari again, Pilos, Tony Adams, oh, and he's let himself down there, and he's finally let England down as well as Detari just slipped the ball wide of the post, and you can see the anguish on his face, it was a mistake really by Tony Adams on the edge of the box there, and the ball bounced kindly for Detari, past Chris Woods, and just past the English post. Alistair winning that comfortably in the air. Now Detari for Hungary, quickening the pace now as the red shirts come forward. A great run by Detari and a free kick. The foul there by Tony Adams. And Detari's pace here, absolutely electric. Scything his way through that England defence. And uh, the Hungarians are getting the free kick. Quite a fair way out. Chris Woods, I imagine if the wall is lined up properly, would fancy his chances. And Detteri is behind this one. Pinter also. And Detteri. That's the first. And England escape away. Paris 
through with the challenge of first one down on Cosma. And first one uh, central defender in a bit of trouble with the referee, and then the other one. A lovely free kick by Dettori beyond Chris Woods, and England saved by the foot of the post. A free kick in another dangerous position then for the Hungarians, who are having much the better of the opening 25 minutes of this international here in Budapest. And it goes behind off the England uh, defender for the corner. Viv Anderson into McMahon. Beardsley will struggle to get that one. And now for Robson. And now for McMahon, almost there in his second cap. <laughs> Within an eighth of scoring his first goal for England, maybe should have done. Transplanted that scene to Anfield. I don't think there's much doubt that that would have finished in the back of the net. That was a great ball from Brian Robson there. He showed great vision. I thought he was going to shoot, actually, with his left foot, but he saw McMahon, and really, he should have scored McMahon. Well, here's Dettori. Oh, it's a good break now for the Hungarians. And it's into the side netting from the number 11, Vince. The pitch, the number seven. Cosmo's gone outside him. Vince is in there as well. There's, there's problems here and into the side netting from Shosh. Waddle with the corner. Floated in there. And Alistair was so close to a goal on his debut that it's not true. A clear header. And Pallister, no doubt, will be hoping for a chance the like of which came from the last corner. But here's Waddle, crossing it in. And it's Robson shots, and it's taken by the keeper. I was noticing the game before, the Olympic game between the French and the Hungarians. For the last half an hour, the Hungarians looked a bit tired, and as we're, as we're looking at this now, they're not looking as fresh as they should be. Well, here coming them again, see if they can capitalise on that. McMahon finds Lineker. Lineker turns it beautifully inside the fullback now for Trevor Stephen. There's his cross coming in. Robson meeting it. And behind for the corner. I think since Glenn Otto's come on, Brian, he's absolutely taken control of this game. It's not easy coming on as substitute, but I suppose when you've got as much class as what uh, Glenn has, it becomes easy. Well, here he is with the free kick for England. Robson trying to get in onto it. In there as well, and the keeper just grabbing it. Robson's done well uh, in the match, Brian. He's had a good match. Um, when you say possibly he's excelled, then against this type of opposition, I might question that. But he's done remarkably well. You can only you can only do what he's done. He's been up and down like a an engine on a lot of occasions. He's had as good a match as I've seen him play for the England side for a long time. When I was talking at the beginning of the programme, Trev, what I was trying to point out was he'll be the one under pressure to retain his place in June. Not that he's finished or anything like that, but when you've got Matt Marn and Webb and Hoddle <laughs> pushing you, then when you get to 29-30, you feel the pressure. First half, I think that um, Hungary were definitely the better team. England have proved to be the better side second half, certainly the, the fitter and the stronger. But I would think that uh, looking at some of England's results just of late, they will be a bit disappointed just getting a draw. But you know, away from home, a draw is never a bad result. Well, a draw is what it is. The final whistle has gone. Bobby Robson's team then takes another step, small though it may be, towards sterner tasks facing them in West Germany this summer. You can't beat the habit of not being beaten. Now, England have uh, won their last six against the Hungarians and drawn this latest one, nil-nil, here in Budapest. <laughs>